This isn't the only time it's happened, right? Oh, remember during that time, the stock market was a wasteland between the mid-1970s and 1982, which you could have bought stocks and like kissing your sister. It went up and went down and went up and but basically it was sideways, with ups and downs. It was a total wasteland. I was a futures broker back then. <laughs> it's, uh, and I'm not a great salesman, okay? Uh, I ceased being a broker in 1992. We started MSA. But at that point in the office I was in, most of the stockbrokers came in after lunch even, before they even showed up for work. The phones weren't ringing at all. It was a wasteland in the office. And I was the best producer, okay? And yet I'm not a real great stockbroker or commodity broker as a salesman, right? I'm not a great salesman. My phone was ringing off the hook. Why? Because commodities were going berserk, mm -hmm. despite the fact that during that time, we had global stagflation. So we had a weak global economy, a weak U.S. economy, and uh, commodities and gold, especially in silver, led, led to commodities. But they were going vertical. So, you know, ponder that when you think about, gee, if we're going into a recession now or, or worse, that should hurt gold. Uh -uh. History says no. Don't make that linkage. But anyway, the spread told you in mid-79 that something had changed. And boy, did it. So, as I said, you know, this isn't the only time in history that this happened, right? So let's right. use the example of 2008 to 2010 here as well. Yeah, actually, gold made its bare low uh, or corrective low after the 1980 peak. It went all the way down to 2000, uh, the year 2000, excuse me, it went down to around $250 an ounce. And it labored there between 2000 and 2001. So the bull market really began in about the year 2000 to 2001. You could have bought gold at 250 bucks or so. Okay. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, it went to near 2000. Okay. So it's a huge multiple game, but it took it a decade to do that. Now, but here's the spread relationship starting from year 2006. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. Through the end of that bull market in 2011, where you'll notice silver was fairly firm there in the beginning, 2006 and seven versus gold, but then it started to bleed off and its relative performance declined from 2007 to 2008, made a low in late 2008, sort of like the low we made last year in 2022 late. Not only was silver underperforming, but it sort of dropped precipitously relative to gold. And then it bounced and went stable, but still capped off, not back to where it had been on the spread charts back in 2006 and seven but started the firm and developed a ceiling where you had multiple highs. They're not all perfectly aligned, I'll admit. If I picked the top three of those highs that occurred below that red line and used it as my point, but there were three rally highs that peaked all of that, they call it 1.6% area where silver was worth that much of an ounce of gold, 1.6%. But in September, October of 2010, the spread broke out. It said, okay, com base completed. I'm reasserting myself on a relative performance basis. And of course it did in a big way. You can see the spread went berserk. It, it doubled. Uh, now when you, one, one and a half to 3%, you say, well, that's only a percent and a half. That's huge. That's like buying a stock at 150 bucks and having to go to 300 and doing it in about a handful of months. Okay, that's, that's what really happened there. But now look at what happened to price during that same time. Back then in gold, after the, peak that occurred in early 2008, just above $1,000, gold went into a range-bound situation with a, with a sharp plummet there in that one month in particular, October 2008. But basically, if you chopped off that one month, it was more or less horizontal action by gold from 2008, 2009, and then you got into late 2009 and it popped through that $1,000 level. You can see it, it broke out above the red line. Now look at silver at that point. Silver didn't make a new high. Silver tried to, but it peaked before at about $21. It got up to 19 something intramonth there in late 2009 and then dropped back off. So while gold made a new price high, didn't cause an immediate explosion. Uh, instead, it just hovered for a while. Silver didn't even make a new high. And that, of course, it sort of explains why that spread chart was underperforming. But then in late 2010, you'll see that silver punched out above that $20 level. Well, that's about coincident with what that spread did. That spread broke out over a ceiling. So silver finally joined gold a handful of months after gold had already taken out its price high. Silver did the same thing. But the more important issue was the spread broke out. 
of that basing pattern. And when that spread broke out, you could have thrown the price charts away and just said, okay, something big is going to happen here. And look what happened in a matter of a couple of quarters. You know, silver went from 20 bucks to 50. Whoa. And gold went from uh, at that same point in time, that would be uh, late 2010. Uh, gold at that point was uh, like $1,200. And it 13, went to yeah, 1213. Oh, nice move. And it went vertical, more vertical. But the spread announced that verticality is to come. And also note that the spread breakout occurred late in the bull trend. It was so, not. It was, we'd already been in a bull trend since lows in 2000, but it wasn't until late 2000, mid 2010 that the spread said, okay, party over. I'm going vertical now. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be incremental. And sure enough, not only did the spread explode, but the metals themselves on a net price basis exploded as well, late in the bull trend. So now gold is how many years old? Well, it's eight. We're now in our ninth year of bull trend. December 2015 was the bear low. We doubled. And now this year, uh, Late last year, actually, we popped the new highs. And uh, so gold has done what it did back in 2009, broke out to new highs, but silver hasn't. So we're, we're late in that bull market. And that spread of silver versus gold has got a ripe structure overhead. Now, this is the same silver gold spread that we used in that 1976 to 1979, and also from 2006 to 2011. This time, we have a downtrend line instead of a flat ceiling. And you'll see that silver back in 2020, during that big surge that both metals had, silver vastly outperformed gold. It went from like 0.8 something, eight tenths of a percent up to 1.6% almost. No, forward to the current time. Okay. Sir. Yeah, back to the current one. Yeah, that. You see the spread really exploded there between mid-2020 and early 2021. But then silver entered a couple year period of underperformance to gold where it pulled back fairly sharply into late September of last year. Same with price, both the gold and silver dropped in price at that point, but silver more. And then silver reasserted itself, both in price, went from the $17 zone up into 24, 25 level. But the spread also had a surging rally. And at that point, there was not a real good structure developed, which we, we couldn't have plotted this line at that point. But since then, since late 2022, when both metals had a recovery, but silver had more of a recovery. Silver entered a pullback in relative performance. Now, it's really not, it's not gone back near the low. In fact, that down tick you see the last reading there is you could uptick it slightly now, but that's intra-month this month. That's not the end of this month close at all. We're early into the month. But you can see that since early 2021, it has developed a downtrend line, a credible one, where you could drop one, two, three, four, five points to find the line. So we, a red arrow there says, if you get a, a monthly close of silver uh, this month or next, somewhere up around 1.22% or higher. Right now we're trading about 1.14%, something like that. So it doesn't take a lot, but you get an uptick to cross that line. And this spread says, I'm back. Okay, I've, the, my tenor and tone is changing. Silver's now gonna beat gold. Small ebook, big impact, the wealth tree. The only four ways that will make you financially free forever. Download it here for free.